Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only, your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. And as always, we would like to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash legends only. We did a drag race recap for the first time ever last week. And you guys seem to really love it. So let us know. Do you guys want us to keep doing more? Do you want us to bring back the deep dives? We've just been trying it all. We have, yes. And you can sound off about that in what what do they have to to talk to us? Is the Discord, Discord. Twitter, Instagram, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, speaking of social media, actually, should we we could shout it out now? Oh, yes. If you are not following us on the socials, Twitter and Instagram at Legends Only underscore pod, as well as YouTube. If you would like to follow us on YouTube, um, you better because we need a thousand subscribers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing we're not desperate. Well, well, sometimes make that however you want. Um, but. <laughs> We really want to do live streams on YouTube, and we can't until we hit a thousand subscribers. So a thousand subscriber, literally Uh, uh, uh. a thousand doves and a thousand subs. So oh, you know, if you have a second, just go over to YouTube Legends Only, hit subscribe, and then you never have to watch a video ever again. But (laughs) right, it just helps us. You literally can't do a live stream until you have a thousand subs. Yeah, thousand subs. Uh. Uh, 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 All the beauty there could be 999 shaking. subscribers but we just need one more to do a live stream so <laughs> please head over to youtube.com it's gonna be like when um who was it that did that thing where they were like oh my god i'm getting to something million and then like everyone just started unsubscribing unsubscribing yeah, yeah. that's that's happen. basically what's gonna happen yeah well, well anyway um well shit Yes. Uh, shout out to all of our Patreon Legends Only fans. Exciting things in the future. We're just experimenting and, you know, trying new things. New year, same us, but new things. <laughs> Sorry, same us. Yeah. <laughs> That's patreon.com slash legends only. Now, shall we get started with this week? Well, we're going to start off on a somber note, and it is sort of a breaking news moment. Unfortunately, over the weekend, we lost a prolific visionary. Producer, songwriter Sophie passed away far too young. Um, Sophie, if you don't know, balanced this incredible career of being super indie, underground, experimental, and yet also working with every name that we know and love. Madonna, Gaga, Rihanna. It just it it was such a interesting balance of being such a cool niche in the PC music world, but also being a very respected collaborator among the greats. And she gave us Bitch I Madonna. And so many different songs with Charlie XCX. And in fact, we are indebted to her for one of our beloved sound clips on this podcast. Because Oh my god, what is it called? (laughs) That's right. Yes. Vroom Vroom, the legendary track from Charlie XCX, which Gia Gunn is still looking up uh, from Sophie. And so we're just going to start off by saying she forever will be a legend in our hearts. And we are very sad to hear of this news. And please, if you haven't, go ahead and check out. There are some compilation Spotify playlists of everything that she worked on that's officially out. There's a treasure trove in the vault of things that we have not yet heard. There's pictures of her working with Rihanna. She was supposed to do songs on Chromatica. The saddest part, uh, the, such a sad part of this is that it was only just beginning and there was so much still to come. So rest in peace to Sophie. Yeah, this is really sad. And I will say, like, I just recently started revisiting a lot of the music, just clean, electronic, fresh, the sweat remix that just came out really recently. I've been obsessed with like, yeah, it's just it's awful. Yeah, but her legacy will live on. She has so many songs already that live with us and stay with us and are going to be influencing generations to come. So we are so thankful for her contribution to the music world. And it is a big loss to the music community. Um, but we are thinking of everyone that was in her circle. One day's up, two days up, three days up. That song yep, should have been yep. number one for 50 fucking weeks. <laughs> uh, <sighs> well, this was a very interesting week uh, for news because it was predominantly dominated by stonks. Now, what is stonk? 
mean? I thought you spelled it wrong. I was like, oh, he has a typo in his tweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of just like mocking the stock industry, like the stock market. It's like people make memes of the stock market and they're like stonks. There's like a really funny like sound. I forget where where it is, but it's just it's just making fun of stocks. That's all it is. It's nothing gotcha. deeper than that. Just like talking stonks. Uh, yeah. So stocks, 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 stocks. <laughs> Everybody bought stocks this week. Yes. Um, you know, I, I commented on it on Twitter. It just felt like Stan Twitter was like, I'll buy a stock. Your tweet started... cracked me up, by the way. <laughs> when you're like, hey, everyone, if using... you're just getting into stocks, check out the... I was like, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Moo like, mo trading soon. Moo tr mo trading insider going to jail like Martha. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, I am not one to give financial advice and I am not, uh, you know, licensed to do that. However, I think it was uh, helpful that the world sort of woke up a little bit to like the, s the stock market and like what's going on a little bit, maybe if you looked into it at all. And uh, I found it very amusing that Stan Twitter was like buying one stock of GameStop and like <laughs> walking into the room with like pop star memes. Also, we really, we've taken for granted how many pop stars visited the New York Stock Exchange to ring the bell during the closing hour. Iconic. Very, very legends only. Uh, Mel B, Hillary, of course, Sarah Jessica Parker did it for Sex and the City, I believe. Um, Delta Goodrum, I'm not sure how or why. Uh, just truly Liza, just a legend I was there when uh, RuPaul did it. We oh, really? did this event. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh, wait, I remember this. It was yeah. a wow moment, right? Mm -hmm. I saw there were some like, iconic pictures of the Smurfs doing it. <laughs> Legends. Ooh um, la la promo. Jersey Shore. Yeah, ooh la la promo. I was desperately looking for a Christina, but I didn't find one. A Mandy Moore. <laughs> I just don't understand any of it. Like, I, it's like I get it because I do, you know, I've done the turnips in Animal Crossing, so I understand, like, the general concept. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, it just always feels illegal. Yes, that's like basically... Like, it's just a giant scam. Right. So, my suggestion is to get your money from the scam. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> other people are. Basically, I'm like, don't... Bills. <laughs> don't let them do that to you to declare Bjork independence. Like, get your money, too. So, basically, take down the man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which they did, apparently. Like, aren't all these billionaires going... They're shaking. Bankrupt or something? That's That was the aim of the GameStop... Uh, purchasing and we're gonna see it's still playing out over the weekend it'll be news by the time it's monday we'll see what's shaking out but yeah it's been a very cool and interesting time in the world and it was the lead story for the entire week uh which every week has been something listen i would rather do this and talk about this instead of all the other shit that was going on so amen to that i will gladly take stonks over insurrection so I also <laughs> got into Bitcoin because of Brad, everyone listening. Oh, that is true. I am not advised to give legal or or, or any advice. Really, just don't take my advice, period. But Yeah, this is not, um, <laughs> I literally don't even know a financial podcast. Su to name. Mew Mew's Orman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a blonde crop wig. <laughs> oh, my Susie. My Susie. I just think it's a time to uh, diversify your portfolio. Oh anyway. my God. Are uh, Bitcoins? Okay. Can you imagine? I have a question. Should I start a new venture? Uh, honestly, like, new spinoff. Do you guys want it? I should start it like a YouTube series where I explain it solely through pop star terms and be like, so treat Bitcoin as Rita Ora. You don't want to put all your coins into that, but you do want to slowly invest just in case. <laughs> and illegally spend money to buy out a restaurant in the middle of a pandemic. Oh my God. That's right. Yes. Another big headline of the week. Rita Ora spending $7,000 to buy out a restaurant to have her COVID birthday party. And didn't she try and pay to have the cameras hidden or something? Oh, I hope so. I'm That's obsessed a good stock with that market news analogy. Yeah, it is. Ugh, Rita. But here's the thing. What is a Bitcoin? Is a Bitcoin an actual, like, can I hold a Bitcoin in my hand? No, it's cryptocurrency. So it's what does that um, mean? digital currency. And I still don't understand entirely what it is, but you can buy a crypto wallet, which is a physical thing, like a USB that you plug into your computer and you can transfer your Bitcoin into that little USB. So, so are you saying that I spent a hundred real dollars on fake money? Uh, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you say that like you don't spend hundreds of dollars on skins and essence and <laughs> like, on League of Legends, I, and you probably I've spent real money on simoleons in my day on The Sims Online. So here's my debate on that, though. At least in mm. that, my tits look good. I have something to show for it. <laughs> I have sparkles. I have wings. I've got like cute dresses. You know what? You make I a fair point. It. It's like that but... TikTok where it's like, name something that isn't illegal, but feels illegal. Yeah. If this winds up being financial. some gigantic Ponzi scheme, I'm throwing well, you under the bus in court. <laughs> I'm like, Brad told me to do it. Brad told me to invest in Bitcoin. In court. Well, I thought I was sorry. playing Neopets. Sorry. <laughs> I think Megan the Stallion promoted Bitcoin too, so blame it on Everyone her. Everyone is. Everyone's putting yeah. it in their bios. It's like Lincoln bio. Like, and what is that? How do you even pronounce that little f- f- the little f- f- thing in the front? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, f- f- Bitcoin. <laughs> um, I'm not <laughs> sure what that is. <laughs> oh well, we'll have to see how it plays out. But you know, you just you have to wait and see, as as our financial guru Ni would say. Yeah, I'll find out. I logged into Neopets <laughs> the other day because I was like, oh, this reminds me of Bitcoin. I wonder what happened to my Neopet account. Exactly. I'm sure it exploded 10 times over and you're a, what's the currency in Neopets? Neopoints, which is basically Bitcoin. Yeah, you're a Neopoint Bitcoin. billionaire. Yeah. Um, no, actually, I have like 800,000 uh, Neopoints. That's like Maybe that can transfer to Bitcoin. Maybe. I hope. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Well, invest if you want do what you want. And that brings us to <laughs> our Ooh, Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Uh, a probable Bitcoin. Uh, they probably use Bitcoin on Chromatica. Um, yes, our Stephanie Jeremato. We've known about this for months. We've talked about this for months. But now Chromatica Oreos have crash landed onto Earth. So invest in Nabisco. There you go. Maybe Nabisco stocks are surging right now. Probably. The flavor. <laughs> Our friend Sam said that they taste like Play-Doh. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't tasted it yet. I haven't seen it. I know that Trish is on TikTok putting out like a call for help to find them. Oh, yeah. Everyone's like scouring the earth for them. Yeah. They're the new, they're like Furbies or Tamagotchis. You yeah. Gotta, you got to find the Chromatica Oreos. You know, my, I'm not jumping at it because I don't want to eat something neon green and pink or whatever the colors are. But yeah, me neither. I, I will taste it when the time comes. But... There was a TikTok the other day that was like, this is so unhinged. There was a TikTok the other day that was talking <laughs> about the ingredient Red 40, like the food yes. coloring. And it was like yeah. talking about how it's so toxic. And he was like going through and he's like showing all these foods that have Red 40 in it. And I was like, oh. Chromatica Oreos. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's bad. But you can indulge every now and then in... A Chromatica Oreo, limited edition. Find it if you can at Walmart. Yeah. I have a hot uh, take here. About Oreos. Oreos. Not sponsored. But... <gasps> what do you feel about Oreos? Newman O's are so much better than Oreos. Are the Newman O's the ones that are circles and have the chocolate? No, I'm thinking of the Elf. Those are my favorites. The ones that... Oh, the I don't... Little, oh what's the little Elf called? What's his name? Keebler. Uh... The Keebler. No, those are those um like oh, striped those... fudge fudge stripes. Mm. Back in the day, those were my jam. Ew, no. Then Oreos, I only care about the chocolate. I don't need the cream. I double stuff is like what is I that is the opposite of what I want in life and also in a Oreo. I do love a, a mashed up Oreo and ice cream. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, absolutely. Which is And I do love the cookie crumble in a fudgy the whale cake. It all comes back to fudgy once again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a diet. Well, we can at least talk about Oreos in theory. But yeah, I would say, you know, back in the day, I used to pound down a sleeve or two uh, a uh, nightly. A sleeve of Oreos. Oh, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I used to just dunk in the milk and, and have like a sleeve a night. And then I'd be like, I don't feel so good. But anyway, yeah, not anymore. But I'll, I'll have my Chromatica moment. Now, importantly, if you sta- stan and scan the QR code on the back of the Chromatica Oreos, it leads to singitwithoreos.com, where you can listen to one of, I think, eight to ten pre-recorded Gaga messages. She did vocals Set to for this. A Thousand Doves instrumental. You give me something to believe in. Yeah, like most of them are like a thousand doves, stupid love, rain on me as 
instrumental versions, they do different inspirational messages. And so it'll be like a thousand doves. And then she comes in and she's like, people can do hard things. I'm very honored to be in the presence of so many locals. Basically the bag of Chromatica Oreos yeah. sitting on the shelves at Pathmark. It's it's like, believe in yourself. You're yeah. a star, baby. You're my favorite. It's You're very a true RuPaul. star. Yeah. It's basically all of Britney's X Factor praises in different forms. Sorry, I just don't get it. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to be like Keisha or something. We basically have this as a soundboard. Something more urban. Oh, I could keep going. <laughs> Do you want me to keep going? No. <laughs> I have them all committed to memory. Yeah, I I feel like the funniest part is that she actually gave us live vocals for inspirational messages and not new music. That's Yeah. You no. Know, it's fine. Also, you know, before we get off this subject, though, I do uh, want to oh, say yeah. the fighter is going to come out for a second. Uh oh! All the yous on Twitter were making fun of Christina for dunk it. Well, me included. The Dunk Olympics. You know, she was dipping down into like the Dunk Chino with the milk, and everyone was dragging her. She was ahead of her time, just like she was with Bionic. You period. Know what? That's it. So keep laughing. She I was paved laughing the path. Then. She did. And now the girls are just catching up with their own Oreos. But ultimately, Extina had to be the martyr of Nabisco. So, yeah, there we go. Christina Aguilera dunked the first Oreo at Stonewall. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, let us know if you've bought them, what they taste like to you. And if you've created a Sing It With Oreo featuring Lady Gaga. Because Lord knows the little monsters don't have a lot else to work with right now. Wow. All I see is like stands being like, all we have is Oreos after six to eight months. But it's fine. Yeah. We, she just killed it at the inauguration. Facts. She's doing political things. That's just what she's up to lately. She's probably like manufacturing a chromatica vaccine as we speak. Shoot me with it now. I'm ready. <laughs> Administered by doves. Uh, well, okay, enough of this. We, however, are not off the subject of baked goods and snacks because much to my delight great british bake off the most perfect show for either going to sleep to if you have anxiety or you just need something to escape to or like hooking up in the middle of a date and putting on something distracting in the background great british bake off is perfect for everything well anyway there's a celebrity edition for charity just announced and at least three of my favorite pop girlies from the uk are in it feels a bit like stan fiction to me but i'll take it nadine of girls aloud Alexandra Burke and Jade of Little Mix are all competing to become the next top super baker of the world, which is a dream come true for me. Now, I don't know. Do you, you don't know Alexandra Burke, right? She won X Factor at one point. Sing a little song. She's got some bops. Broken heels. Hey, hey, hey. Ugh, so good. But the best part of Alexandra Burke's, like, story... I guess is she had a moment. This is kind of niche. Uh, during an interview, she had a song called Elephant. And she went to a writing camp in the US. And she heard the phrase elephant in the room. And she decided to use that for a song. But she went on an interview in the UK. And she claimed that she had heard that phrase in the writing camp. And it's never been said before. It's not really a phrase in the UK. So she would be the first pop star to bring it over to the UK. She did not know that she was alone in that, and she was the only person who had never heard that phrase. So she got kind of mercilessly made fun of because everyone was like, no, that's a phrase. <laughs> but like, she was uh... like, she's like, I'm kind of the first person to put it in a song. So <laughs> ahead of her time, ahead of her time, Elephant, check that out. It's an insane banger. Nadine needs new introduction. Girls Aloud Queen, Dairy Legend won't be able, we'll need subtitles for this guaranteed when she's baking with flour. Um, <laughs> and then Jade, who is hilarious from Little Mix, will probably provide a lot of one-liners that will be very sassy and funny. I'm very excited for this. Uh, who would you like to see in a baking battle of, like, legendary girl group one-off members or, like, X Factor winners from a decade ago? Miss Juicy. Oh my god, absolutely. Christina Aguilera. <laughs> who else? Um, I mean... Uh... Big Ange, but like... Yes. Posthumous oh, my Big legends. Ange. I know. You would have a Bravo Bake Off, I feel like. Ooh, who would I put it? Lindsay Hubbard from Summer House. 
Yes. You oh my God. Lindsay that. Hubbard and Christina Aguilera in the same room. Picture it. <laughs> and they both have to do a three tiered cake in celebration of Bionic. Put Christina Aguilera on Summer House. Oh my God. Next season, Andrew Cohen, listen. Oh, I don't think he does <laughs> Summer House, actually. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I actually could see a Bravo Bake Off charity edition. Teresa. With, like, a representative from each city. You know, they, they tease that during the during the Olympics promo that everyone gagged over years ago, like having all the, the cities compete against each other. Mm-hmm. Ramona could teach everyone how to make a uh, vodka soda again. Yes. Did you see right. that video? Yeah. Of course. So ridiculous. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's premiering in the spring on Channel 4 in the UK, and hopefully they'll find some way to VPN or whatever, find a way to watch it over here. But very excited. Um, Oh, and shout out Cheryl's Only Human is on streaming now. So Girls Aloud news of the week from me is Cheryl's 2014 album is now on streaming for the US. So Is that the song that's like, you're only human? Yes. Is it? Where the hell did I ever hear? Where did that come from? Is it really? Um, yeah. Well, actually, no, there's two. There's, I think you're thinking of Christina Perry. Oh, maybe. There's an, uh, there's, Cheryl has an album called Only Human. And hers is more like, you're only human. So I don't think it's the same song. Oh, I think you're thinking of Christina Perry. Different arrangement, same same sentiment. But this one's got a song called I Don't Care by Bonnie McKee, actually. So, and Crazy Stupid Love and Live Life Now, which is basically like Live, Love, Laugh. Uh, okay, I'm looking that one up. Gotta look that one up. It's not her best album, but we still stand. What else? Oh, and finally, I very casually tweeted about Cheryl's Let You, and all of a sudden, like people started RTing and then member of S Club Juniors ended up doing a whole dance to it on TikTok, which I jokingly said somebody should do. And then he actually did it. Wow, um, your impact. Literally my impact. Shout out to Aaron Renfrey. That's all my Cheryl and Nadine updates for the week. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that one up. I still need to watch the British Bake Off. I see so many people praising it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, there's plenty of seasons and it's the most calming, non-competitive competition in the world. So I highly recommend it and it will soothe you. Guaranteed. I need to watch that and also Love Island UK. Uh, Yeah. I've yes, that one is not so much a relaxation one, but yes. But Great British Bake Off, the biggest drama is like when they take out the cake and it has a soggy bottom. Wow. <laughs> Nothing worse. Nobody likes than a, a soggy, soggy bottom. bottom. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, back over here in the States at a little store called Urban Outfitters. <laughs> little mom and pop shop. Yeah. More vinyls are out. Yeah. Our impact. Not really. Undoubtedly. Somebody, uh, well, the gay who's in charge of issuing these releases is clearly listening because it's two faves. Yes, we're talking about Lindsay Lohan's second studio album, A Little More Personal, Raw, and Gwen Stefani's The Sweet Escape. Iconic. Very. You know, Lindsay always gets a lot of praise for rumors, a lot of praise for speak, but then nobody talks about Daughter to Father, Black Hole. You know, the whole second album is also fantastic. Fast Lane. It got a little darker, a little heavier thematically. You took my innocence away. Mm hmm. So good. And the album art on the second album is iconic. It's so good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I know. I'm debating. I don't know. I might get it. Oh, but like, to purchase. Yes. Yeah. I just don't know where to I support put all you. of them. Well, one day you'll have a mansion and you'll want to have. Eh, All no, of these I don't want to mention. It's too big. <laughs> I don't like knowing what's, or I don't like not knowing what's around the corner at all times. <laughs> You're very whoopee. I yeah. don't like a stranger in my house. No strangers in my house. And I would literally live in a cube if I could. Well, you do. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is fact. It has like a couple nooks and crannies, but it, it is a cube. <laughs> You do, and you work, you know, you log on to Minecraft to make cube homes for yourself. Oh my god, shout out to my Minecraft home, me and Linny. We have a like, legendary <laughs> Minecraft home, which some of the girls have seen on my Twitch streams. That's true, and if yeah. we had a thousand subscribers on YouTube, <laughs> you could stream it. <laughs> yes, if we had 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, we could stream, oh my god, we should do, well, no, no one would join. A Minecraft? Yeah. 
Yeah, they would. A Legends only Minecraft server. Absolutely, they would. We could just recreate Chromatica. Honestly, we could build different like eras of pop stars as homes. Oh my Ugh, God. It would be good. The Bionic House from Neki Menage. <gasps> Literally, we could do that. So let's make it happen. And make I'll learn how to play it Minecraft. Happen. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I know. I need to. So, yes, if you're interested, go check it out at Urban because there's that. And then Sweet Escape is so good. The superior song called Yummy. We don't know Justin Bieber's version. I mean, the Sweet Escape itself is a song. Top tier. Wind it up. All of it. The ballads, Four in the Morning, Early Winter. I love Early Winter. Justice for Early Winter. Is that song anyway? We loved that era. We did. And we wore our LAMB. Probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, know what that era had a lot of? What did it have? Fashion. Oh. So I think it's time for... High fashion! (laughs) So what is going on? Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. All right, ladies. Fresh out of Urban Outfitters and onto the runway. Fresh off the runway. Yes. And back over to, I, I think... The UK for mine, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Oh my God. Okay. I'm not as dumb as I think. Because that's where Abbey Road is, right? We both have UK, actually. I just realized. <gasps> but yes. You're Let's right. move. Oh, wait. No, COVID's just as bad there as it is here, isn't it? I'm going to decide that based on when the Girls Allowed reunion tour is. But yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what was I just going to say? Um, I've only been to the UK once. It's great. Yeah. I loved it. My mom got attacked by a peacock. It was iconic. <laughs> Yeah. What was Katy Perry doing there? <laughs> yeah, we went to the Butterfly Museum. Um, oh, oh, okay. Iconic. Anyway, um, shout out to all of our listeners in the UK. Hey, girls. Um, hey. <laughs> so, from my high fashion moment of this week, I am giving it to Brie Runway, queen of the song ATM, as well as others. For the new solo version that she performed at Abbey Road Studios. Mm, so yes. good. She It was like a simple setup, but she gave this like chic shoulder with like a black glasses. Ugh, obsessed. Simple. I love that. And she did like a hair whip moment, right? Isn't that mm-hmm. something went viral? Yeah, she had the pony, which Ugh, you know we, me. We love that. We are nothing if not consistent. Yeah, sees one pony. Whip. I'm like, ah. High fashion. (laughs) That's high fashion. Yes. uh, Keeping it in the UK, I'm going to throw it over to a franchise that we haven't discussed yet, which is Drag Race UK. In my opinion, the more, mm, the better of the two seasons (laughs) that are playing right now. Uh, (laughs) I'm giving a special shout out to the most fashionable outfit of the week. Of course, that is Tia Coffee's (laughs) Green Monstrosity. Um, If you don't know, Tia Coffey is one of the contestants on Drag Race, and she presented one of those, it was one of those episodes where you make your own look, and oh, she did. And instead of being delusional and kind of like explaining it away, she had the funniest responses and speeches on the runway about the dress. She was, you know, the, the shtick of all the drag queens, they walk down, they're like, I'm giving you blah, blah, fantasy, giving, serving you Grace Jones shoulders. Tia goes, I'm serving an adequate dress. Is it fashionable? No. Is it? (laughs) I feel like I need to watch this. You absolutely do. And Michelle goes, what do you think I'm going to say to you? And she goes that I was robbed and I should have been in the top. (laughs) (laughs) She completely flipped the script and it was hilarious. And then when... We had this week of Drag Race in the U.S., and La La Ri presented arguably one of the most tragic outfits in the franchise's history. Tia Coffee jumped on Twitter and tweeted her and said, we should start a fashion la- label together. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, she's so funny. So big shout out to Tia Coffee, who has a fantastic sense of humor. Wow. Now, um, Drag Race U.S., briefly... Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched, um, hit the fast forward 30 seconds thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Utica, I'm going to say Deserved. it, my number one. Like, I think yeah. she's my pick for winner now. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think I think the tides are turning a bit. Uh, but I also think that she was, I don't like to use the word robbed because... Oh, she was robbed. She was robbed. <laughs> and I think they did it on purpose to make us all 
scream because I gasped. I was like, "Are uh, yeah." Not to say that. Uh, not to say that Got Mix outfits were bad at all. It's just like the level of artistry of Utica's yes. looks was like, come on, the mm-hmm. sleeping bag look. Are you kidding me? Fashion, and I know fashion. nothing about fashion, I, but fashion that was fashion. But I knew that. I agree. I think that was a setup of some kind. And, you know, and then, oh, Untucked really did give you another part of the story. Did you watch it? Yeah. I would say that they, season 13 had its closest moment to come on Teletubby, transport us to Mars. Like that yeah. moment. It got the closest to, and a sugar daddy moment. So congratulations for good TV all around to all oh, of them. It was fantastic a TV. Yes. I'm loving this season so far. And if you're loving it too, we are on Discord. We chat during the episode. Um, Like I missed last week, but then I was on this week and we just chat. And yeah, like you said, Untucked was wild. So if you have not watched it, definitely watch this week's past episode. Get caught up. Fantastic or you're only getting TV. half the story. <laughs> and some weeks I'm like, I'm good with half the story. <laughs> oh, I wanted double. I wanted In this quadruple case, the story yes, this week. You do I wanted the whole story. Literally, I wanted like the six hour raw cut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. Well, anywho. Oh, also, speaking of new music, before we get into new music, uh-huh. the new runway mix this week on Drag Race was a bop. That's true. They always try and switch up the RuPaul song that they'll walk to slash do their celebration song at the end. We love a businesswoman. Such a businesswoman. Always Get those promo- <laughs> Yeah, literally always <laughs> getting that promo in. You're a winner, baby. Yeah, that's the But latest. like, seriously though, Ru is a master at that. Oh, of course. Always wear a suit if you want them to take you seriously. Um. Not happening. I'm wearing sweatpants yeah, no. right now as I talk about high fashion. She was right. robbed. That was high fashion. Flash to me standing here in a cloud sweater and bright royal blue sweatpants and socks. Well, that's serving. fashion. <laughs> Anywho, so new music this week. Now, I have two recommendations this week. The first one I want to give a shout out you do? to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to music, Brad, <laughs> writer girl. Um, so I want to give a shout out to friend John Ali, friend of the pot. We Stan John Ali sent me this album the other day, and I was literally on my treadmill, and I was like, "Okay, I'll look that one up." And I clicked it. It is the new. Now I don't know how to pronounce this. It's either Seeb, Seeb, or Seb, or I don't, I don't know. But anyway, it's called uh, "Sad in Scandinavia." Don't know where that Which, is, but well, <laughs> it's uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark. It's basically the home of all sad dance music, Robin, everything that we love. So that is a perfect title. Oh, so basically, I mean, all the good music comes from Sweden, like period. Exactly. I, well, that's why this album is so good then. Um, so he texted it to me, recommended, love it. Shout out to John. Title track, Sad in Scandinavia, Bop. And then also there's a song called Feel It Again, which is basically about like, you know, I just want to like live my life again. Also a bop. Relatable. Yes, so shout good. out to John. Shout out to Queer Necessities. Shout out to everything he's doing. So a deep, deep friend of the pod. Mm-hmm. IRL friend. IRL friend. That is true. Yeah. And this album's like long too. It's like a lot of songs. Uh, and then the next one, speaking of RuPaul, is a remix of the song. Well, not remix, but it's like a new mix of Supermodel by also going to butch this uh, name. Bonsai Mammal. Well, I guess mm-hmm. that was kind of easy. That was like, yeah. Yeah. So good. Bop. Love that. So I have a few recommendations of my own. We're going to take it back. Now, you're not listening to this on a Friday, but we are getting into a Friday state of mind. That's right. The queen of meme. A decade later, the comeback of a century. Rebecca Black is back with a new song called Girlfriend. And it's honestly my new Music Friday winner. Easily. She killed it. It sounds like Carly Rae Jepsen. It sounds mm-hmm. like of that world. And I just think her redemption, not quotes in quotes, redemption story is so good because obviously the internet is always going to comment on her posts and stuff. Be like Friday, Friday, like everyone knows the Friday song, but she's actually making fantastic music and has been for a while, but now it's like really becoming a thing. And I think she can eclipse or at least overcome this giant frozen in time perception of her by making fantastic bops in a way she has kind of the same thing that carly ray jepson has to get over which is calling maybe girl 
I highly support go check out Girlfriend. It's so catchy and good. And it is really catchy. I'm loving seeing her come into her own and really like actually being an artist and proving that you don't have to be a joke or a meme or something like that. And now she like really she's owned that. She's had this whole I don't know if you saw that whole notes moment she had that really kicked off this new era of Rebecca Black where she was like that, you know, it plagued me for years and now I'm like coming into my own. It's very good. I'm rooting for her. She also just looks like she's having so much fun with this. She does. So I'm looking forward to what's next for her. And go stream Girlfriend on your favorite streaming service. Next, we have, and we meant to mention this earlier, Selena Gomez. She's Spanish. She's a baby. And she's releasing her first ever Spanish language EP, Revelacion, which is a long time coming. She promised it probably over a decade ago at this point, which is like another legend uh, who promised Amy Reflejo part two for a decade or so. Um, So Selena Gomez has this EP coming. She already released De Una Vez, and now she released this week Baila Conmigo, which I think is a bop. I think she's doing it. And I will say, like, if I'm talking serious high fashion editorial, then she's my actual pick because this cover and the artwork for this is fierce. It's really good. Yeah, the artwork is really good. Yeah, I'm enjoying what she's doing with it so far. I think it's... I think we only know two song titles so far, but I'm I'm really enjoying the journey. I really like the music. And yes, if you didn't know, Britney released a interview around Glory where she talked about how Revival was the inspiration for Glory in a lot of ways. And she said in her explanation of Selena, you know, she's she's Spanish and she's a baby. I really I really like Selena Gomez's album Revival. I was really inspired by that. I thought it was very clever and it was very smooth. And um, she's you know, she's Spanish and she's 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 a baby. So I was really inspired by her work. And I think as women, it's cool to like look up to other women and to like, I mean, she's younger than me, but still I was like, <laughs> wow, this is like really good it's stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it was very cool. So I was definitely inspired by her stuff, which became like an instantly beloved sound bite from Britney. So here she is, the Spanish and a baby herself, releasing a Spanish EP, which we love. I'm She's not a baby anymore. Not a baby, not yet a woman. Speaking but of yes. Selena, for a quick second, oh yeah, have you been seeing all of the stuff that she's been doing where she's been speaking up about social media platforms and harassment yes. and yes. all that stuff? Yeah, I, she's calling it out. I have so much respect for that. Like she really especially given all the stuff that she's been through, which I think Mm -hmm. we've talked about at some point. Um, Yeah, she's calling out Facebook and other platforms. And I like that she's specifically talking about misinformation, disinformation throughout the election and beyond, because that was such a big part of the story that I felt not enough people were truly calling out, which was that so much of the, without getting too political, we are not uh, pod safe America, as we often say. So much of this era is going to be dominated by the way that our population was misled by disinformation. She's calling it out. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, especially as one of the most followed people. Yeah. And as a victim of deep fakes, she is, I mean, the stuff with her, is, it's not, it's so much bigger than politics. It's huger. True. Not huge, more uh, whatever. Bigger. Uh, you get the point. Yeah, uh-huh. bigger. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, any, I just wanted to say I have a lot of respect for that, like outside of the music and like she's serving and all that and like a serious note. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. She's doing a lot. I mean, she's another one who who does 50 million things. She's also doing Selena and Chef on HBO Max, which I, I see a lot of conversation about among friends who like watch it and enjoy watching her fuck up and like... All of that. So I keep getting those ads on YouTube. Yeah. I like that she does a lot of things. Moving on. We have one I saw you listening to. Oh, you did? Mm Mm-hmm. How? Dutch DJ and producer Sam Felt. You put it on your Instagram, I think. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oops. Uh, (laughs) Sam Felt teamed up with the one and only Kesha for a song called Stronger, not a Kelly Clarkson cover, for a little electronic moment, which, you know, I we've never recommended that before Never. but she she loves a self-empowerment anthem herself and now we've got one for the dance floor i love it it's so good yeah i think this is a nice side project or whatever it is for her because it's different than what she had been doing mm-hmm. so i think it's cool that she has sort of gone electronic if you will 
It's, uh, she took your advice. She heard it. She said, you know what? You're welcome, everyone. Let me listen to that gay and hop on this DJ track. (laughs) (laughs) My God, maybe I'll start producing singles soon. I mean. In the year from now. It's possible. So, yeah, shout out to Kesha, uh, who has a song called Stronger. Check it out. And finally, we know her well. We know her voice well. Her name is Maya Marie, and she's got a new song out with, it's another collaboration with an electronic group rival called hate that about you which she said on her instagram was a britney demo obviously everyone gets shook every time there's talk of a britney demo right because her actually saying that it was i believe it oh yeah for sure to be fair and i was actually talking about this with a friend i feel like from at least 2000 to 2010 Every song, probably every pop song, potentially could have been given to Britney. Like, I feel like she was such the priority client. When people say, when Ciara was like, Goodies was almost a Britney song, I feel like almost every pop song was a Britney song until they decided they didn't want it. Like, during that era, when they say like, oh, this one almost was a Britney song, it's like, but was it? Like, what? or just was it one of the many songs that her team sifted through and decided not for this album for whatever reason? I just feel like, because she was such you know, the queen of radio and everything that like, I feel like she was top priority for all the best songs for so long. That's just interesting. That's like an interesting. She's a legend and (laughs) she is the moment. Just an interesting side thought I had about, you know, when, when they say like, this was almost a Britney song. I'm like, I'm pretty sure every hit of the two thousands could have been a Britney song. Well, who wouldn't want it to be? Of course. Of course. So it's like you know, when all those Erica Jane songs were like leaked as Britney. Oh my God. Pretty like, mess. Single. Yeah. It really, you know, it, that really brought it back to this week, actually, but hold it against me debuting at number one 10 years ago because, or it was a few weeks, whenever it was, um, because for, for the old gays who were around then, that was the time when they had the 20 second, 10 second teasers of hold it against me. And one sneaky gay snuck in Erica Jane's pretty mess video. It was not me, by the way. It was not you. It's such a you move, but it was not you. (laughs) Yeah, smart. You literally would have created a fake Brinty Spree's YouTube account (laughs) and done the same artwork. I honestly feel like there was... I need to look at my tweets or something, because I feel like at that time... I was one of the ones being like, no, that's Erica Jane. We listened to her in Jersey. That's not Yeah, Britney. no, for sure. I think every, you know, we called it out, but it was still hilarious. And there's actually, I looked it up on YouTube and there were so many comments of people being like, this video is going to slay, like completely oblivious. <laughs> it was a f- fantastic edit. Anyway, back to Maya. Yeah, a bop. Hate that about you. I could hear it. I see what she was saying about electronic moment for Britney. She's a cute girl. I really enjoy this one. Yeah, and I can obviously hear it because Maya sounds like Britney. But I also think this one, I mean, going back to what you were saying before, uh, the elephant in the room, um, (laughs) as we all know. Invented by Alexandra Burke. Yes, invented by Alexandra Burke. If you listen to a song like Body Ache, we all know that's Maya. I mean... Right, she co-penned it and uh, sang it. Yeah, but I feel like with this song that Maya just came out with, it sounds uniquely like Maya and not... yeah. And same Maya with, trying to be Britney. Yeah, she's got plenty. I mean, God, Black Widow forever, that demo. Ooh, oh. yeah. But yeah, no, I know it, it's got to be hard because that comparison is always going to be there. But this is just an enjoy- enjoyable song on its own. Yeah. But it does happen to have a Britney connection. So Also, leave her good. alone, everyone. Well, yeah, that really needs to die down. Yeah, I don't think anyone listening to this podcast is doing it, but yes. like fans are... are harassing her like insane and i'm like shut the fuck up and leave the girl alone yes just to make it perfectly clear if you think that the background singer of a major pop star's record has any say in the placement or quality or quantity of her voice appearing on the record you clearly have no clue what goes into music production you have nothing to say about like what that album like her motive for being on that album she did the job that she was given to do she does a legendary job so If anyone's being rude to her, it's got to stop because there's no reason for it at all. It's so uncalled for. It's disgusting. So, yes, we do not support that behavior. We denounce it. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Friend to the pod. Today we learned don't fuck with Maya Marie. That's what we learned. (laughs) 
<laughs> basically Paris when she's like that oh that one scene is so legendary she's like James <laughs> done it before I'll do it again and Paris is just like yeah I'm being dead serious I will beat your oh, face yeah. in if you think I haven't done it I've done it before and I will do it again I really don't care so watch your mouth yeah all right I'm over I it. give up <laughs> my favorite shout out to my uh Keep the bops coming. And also has been penning a lot of K-pop hits too. So we love to see it. We need Maya to collab with Heidi. And then I need to spend like a year learning music production. And then I can make a iconic. There you go. Superficial to lead single. Yes. If you missed it, Heidi and Slater yeah. met up. And if you listen to our erratic, unhinged interview on Heidi's podcast, we told her directly to work with Slater and, you know, get into that scene. And lo and behold, a year later, here we are. So where's our royalties? So do you guys love <laughs> clubbing? Are you dancers? <laughs> she okay, was writing down notes. We always joke about our impact and 99.9% of the time it's not serious. Uh-huh. This is the 0.1% where it is 100% you <laughs> saying to her, on that podcast, you need to collab with Slater, period. Her and Spencer yeah. absolutely took notes. Yeah. And I'm well, here for I'm it. I'm glad that she is. And I'm interested to hear what happens with that. But I'm... I feel like they'll do a song. Yeah, they said they will. So we'll see what comes of it. But, you know, it made sense. It still makes sense. So I'm interested to hear what comes of Superficial Slater Edition. And yes, I will take that royalty cut. <laughs> I mean, i'll be a co-writer say... i would absolutely be a co-writer <gasps> oh my god same basically just oh me oh my yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> co-pen by t kyle yeah um what was i just gonna say um oh i mean she did admit to us that when we did the superficial deep dive she had her highest sales ever <laughs> right in that's history true. Of superficial well she took our no. advice she, next all we're really fighting her good on fight. bitcoin so <laughs> invest in bitcoin and heidi and slater one more bit <laughs> oh god yeah wow so many things coming up to look forward to and things that are coming out now why don't you wh let's run down one of the biggest events of our time she's got a point <laughs> Yes, everyone. So this past weekend, the other day, the legendary Wendy Williams Lifetime documentary movie premiered. Yes. Now, Brad, do we need to watch this and do some sort of like special review? I feel like it's required. I don't know I that think we have it a choice. Needs its own experience. Probably. It is a Lifetime original event. If you would like for us to do a Legends Only <laughs> movie premiere event, tweet, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Let the us know. The lips emoji. Yes. The lips emoji. Tweet it at us. DM us. And we will, you know, do a little fun thing. But let us know if that's something you want. Um, yeah. I just... We'll be watching out for that. The scene with the Statue of Liberty, I just... I just... And she's having quite the press week with it. Oh, I've been saving every single screenshot, every meme. Her saying, every... oh, we're on a break and starting to eat yeah. her salad. <laughs> oh, it's break time. Oh, <laughs> she's been serving. Oh, you know what? Honorary fashion award to Wendy Williams this past week. <laughs> because for all the shit we joke about, she's been serving looks. Yes, it's truly been a banner week for her. Did you also see that someone said Simone's look with the fun bags? was <laughs> they're like just, oh my god wow lifetime went overdrive with their wendy promo this week oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, they didn't lie yes so that's Me. coming came already and we will uh possibly be discussing in depth and then we have something involving balls throwing balls super ball coming up the following week um it won't nearly be the event it was in 2020 but there's probably going to be a spectacle a stunt of some kind. So we will surely be on the lookout for that. Yeah, this little thing called the Super Bowl. Yeah, we'll see. I think the weekend has 
things to say about the Grammys. Who knows if he's going to pull a little middle finger to them of some kind? Who know? Who knows? And then all of the possible collabs that could show up on the stage between Lana to Rosalia, it could be anything really. So we'll have to see. It's also just so wild to think that the Super Bowl is like the one year anniversary of like the last big event yep. before yep. the world shut down. Like I always think of that Shakira, as being like, yeah, and J-Lo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see how it plays out. It will be very different this year for many reasons. So we'll be watching. Well, we won't be watching the no, actual game. Well, like, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch all 12 minutes. I'll watch of... on YouTube after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll all right, everyone. Week. Yeah, what a week. I mean, week number, what, two of Biden's America? That's right. And JoJo Siwa's gay. And uh, what else happened? That's about it. <laughs> we are and frightened Bitcoin. of Cornova. We are frightened of Cornova, and we are stonks all over the place. And yeah, that's where we're at right now. And so everybody, wear a mask. Wear two. Wear three masks. I started uh, wearing two. Right. And, and I fucking broke out on my face, and I'm pissed. Yeah, I guarantee break out every time I wear the mask. It's it's bad. But we got to do what we got to do. We got to. I know. I got to keep the singing voice in good shape. That's that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. so everybody stay safe at home do what you gotta do and we will we're be... not gonna have a summer okay well i am not gonna leave off on that note <laughs> okay <I'm> like, <laughs> oh my god remember that cascade concert in may well we'll see what happens everybody be safe socially distanced get your vaccine if you're eligible and, and subscribe to us on youtube since subscribe to us on we youtube we won't probably be having any events in the near future right. <laughs> but we can go live that's right and make sure to leave a review a kind one uh on the app store five star yeah, or a mean one just make sure that it's five stars no <laughs> oh yeah five stars yeah <laughs> like yeah as long as it's five stars you it can say be mean you but want. just give us five stars <laughs> yeah and uh yeah so that's basically... And until uh, uh, next week, we will see you all on Twitter and Instagram and Discord and um, here next week. So until then, we will... Oh, wait. I'm doing both, all of our parts. But you know, you're not. You were good. You were good. Oh, we will... See you soon. <laughs> oh, God. It's like a fucking trumpet. The voice is preserved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>